the big Charleston contest. I am uh, Stefano. I am an Italian man. You've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Welcome to Swango, Peter. A happy, sleepy little hillbilly town where seemingly innocent, nice, naive people turn just like that. A vengeful, hateful mob. How do you know this? Because these are my people. Domo Arangato, Mr. Scotto. Hey, hey! It's the Brooklyn's Dad Talks About Everything podcast, and I am your host, Michael Scotto, and people say I'm Michael around. Today we dip our toe back into my testimony, talk about a couple of young ladies who were obedient to the Lord, and we talk about how maybe we can use our everyday life to honor the Lord, preach the Lord, and even talk about the current dispensation. The monkeys, the Messiah, and me. La da dee dee. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, this is. I just wanted to take a quick turn here and kind of put the last few messages into a a short message, something from my life. I talked about music and the place of Christian music in my life, and we also talked about Paul McCartney's tug of war and how that brings back memories of a simpler time for me, and how I filter that by looking ahead to a time in my resurrection body with the Lord and just that I can't even imagine that level of joy and peace and comfort and that the Lord is allowing me to do that when I think upon those things. Listen to Say, 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 my junior year in high school, we talked about that previously. Going back to the very beginning of this podcast, filtering everything through scripture and through our relationship to the Lord and his grace and his love and his mercy and the gospel. Well, part of my gospel story has to do with the monkeys and here's how that works. I talked about how difficult it was my first year here in North Carolina after I moved from Philadelphia. It was a whole different world. The only other place I'd ever been in my life was New York. And I thought New York was weird compared to Philadelphia. Uh, I had no idea what was coming. Anyway, uh, when I got here that next summer, I said baseball sort of rescued me. Part of baseball was not just playing organized ball, which I did. I played at school. And then also I played in the summer league, in the pony league. There was a A guy in our neighborhood who was friends with some of my friends that I had made, I'd met some kids that moved down from New York and from Boston, and we had played some hockey uh, late in the winter uh, when I started to get out of my shell a little bit and meeting some people. And there was a guy from Chicago as well. So we played a little bit of street hockey. It was kind of weird. Neighbors didn't know what was going on, but we did. Anyway, they had a um, a, a guy who was a, I guess, college student age or maybe a little older, and he was hanging out and they told me that he was he was a youth worker at their church well I didn't know what that was specifically I mean we had somebody leading our youth program an adult and everything like that but I really didn't understand all the ins and outs of it and how it worked well anyway as the weather got better he would come around with his car and cram us kids in there and we'd go over to Looper Field here not far from my neighborhood Carriage Hills across the way over into Grimsley territory I'm a page guy that means something to people in Greensboro. (laughs) Anyway, uh, I was sitting in the back and he popped in the monkeys and he's playing a monkey song and I'm singing along because I knew the the entire monkeys catalog, I think at that point. And he, uh, he's like, who's back there singing? I said, I am. He said, are you a monkeys fan? I said, oh yeah, I'm a huge monkeys fan. You know, so he invited me to a retreat weekend they were having. Well, you know, my criteria was, you know, are there going to be girls there? (laughs) I guess I guess I was 15 uh, somewhere in that that territory. I might have been made might have been the year after that. I think it might have been the year after that. I was 16 because I think I'd been to the Petra concert at that point that I talked about recently. Anyway, I went on this retreat weekend and it was a typical youth retreat weekend. The guys stayed with the guys, girls stayed with the girls. There were camping events, you know. Then we had these general meetings and he would sort of give a, a Bible message, and it was a Presbyterian church. And he gave what I'm thinking back, assuming is the gospel. I don't know, though, because it was sort of not what I was used to. If somebody was telling a Bible story, they told a Bible story and maybe a lesson about life. I didn't quite understand it. Uh, But anyway, I did. I I met a girl there, Amy, who I really liked. But she went to a a different school. I think she went to one of the county schools at the time. And, you know, we just flirted around and nothing happened, of course. But when we got back, we tried to stay in touch on telephone and we'd 
meet at the skating rink on weekends as much as we could. But eventually we drifted because we were just in different schools and our lives just went in different directions. But I really liked her. She was really nice. Let's uh, jump forward just a few years. The Monkees reunite, 20th anniversary tour, and they're coming to Chapel Hill. I go and, of course, get tickets, drive down to Chapel Hill, get tickets for the Dean Doom. And I, I get three tickets because I can't, I, I don't remember any idea who I was going to ask. I think I do, but I don't. I don't want to say because I don't think, I don't remember specifically. But I, my friend Ron was going to go with me too. Anyway, it, things fell through and I had the extra ticket. So I was walking on the campus at UNCG and lo and behold, I ran into Amy. Immediately recognized each other and we just started chatting about high school, you know, those several years earlier. And I said, by any chance, you want to go to the Monkees concert tonight? And she said, sure. So, you know, picked her up. We went to the Monkees concert. Had a great time. Great concert. It was one of my favorite concerts of all time that monkey show. And uh, on the way home, I ended up dropping off Ron and then I was taking Amy home and we just started talking and she started to move the topic toward spiritual things. So then she started sharing again, her personal faith and her Christian experience. And I was trying to filter that through my Catholicism. And it was just really a great thing that she did that she, she wasn't, she took a natural situation and she let her her new life flow through that. I immediately recognized the difference in Amy. She wasn't, you know, the flirtatious 15, 16 year old that I'd met earlier. She was more serious. I mean, she was still she still had a great personality and she was still a lot of fun. And again, I'm not saying that we should lure people in with the world. That's not what happened at all. I was going to the monkeys concert. She just decided to go along and made a pleasant evening of it. She didn't try to filter her Christianity and water it down because of the monkeys. She just took a normal opportunity of two friends going to a really nice show. There was nothing bawdy about it. I know I almost said his name, but I don't want to. <laughs> the guy I've referenced in previous podcasts who said that rock and roll forced him to have drugs and have sex with everybody. So it, again, didn't have that effect on me, but I can't imagine it. This monkey show making me want to do drugs and have sex. Anyway, it was a she she took that opportunity, and as I look back, it's just another piece in the puzzle. And uh, I don't know why we didn't stay in touch. Part of it was again at that point I was still a little weirded out by non-Catholic Christians. I'd known some, and I'd had positive experiences, and I was on the edge of it. I had a lot of Christian music. I, I think I saw Petra over those years, uh, maybe five or six times, and I saw him in Raleigh, Winston Salem, everywhere but Greensboro. <laughs> I actually saw him at Creation Festival as well. There, there's so many things that came together that sort of when the time came for me to have my crisis of faith in 1991, that all those experiences were there. All those seeds had been sown. Going back to the Petra concert, going back to those two guys in my dorm room at NC State, and me kicking against the goads each time, me fighting it each time. And just other experiences I had like that with Amy that night struck me. Uh, even, and there was another girl in college, we, uh, we, and we were in spring break and we ended up just going walking on the beach together. And she started talking about her faith too. And I talked, well, yeah, so I'm a Christian, you know, I know the lingo, I know faith, I know, I know those words, I know what they mean to me in Catholicism. And she didn't, she was not very familiar with Catholicism. So I thought, I thought it was funny because she really, some of the things she said were just not correct, but she was very open about her faith. And again, it was just another weird, weird period for me that I ended up with somebody who just walking down the beach and somebody I really liked, you know, she was really nice and she was really sweet, but she never really gave me any hint that she would like to, you know, start dating me or anything. I don't, you know, it could be for a million reasons, but uh, I think part of it was just because I think she was looking for somebody who was a committed Christian. I don't know that, but looking back, it seems like that, but it just seems like these people would come in and just use regular opportunities and they weren't manipulative, you know. It wasn't I, I never was a fan of this, you know, friendship evangelism. I don't mind the big concept of friendship evangelism, but this whole idea of of sort of going along with everything and then not really saying anything. I know they don't say that. I'm being. I know I'm being very critical and sarcastic, 
But just the experience I had with it when I did become a Christian of the training. These people didn't go through any training for friendship evangelism. These are just natural conversations that arose from whatever we were talking about. You know, and then their their natural new nature in Christ, their new spirit came through in what they were doing and saying because the opportunity arose and they shared their faith and we had a discussion about it. And then they left it in the hands of the Lord, I'm assuming that, because they didn't push me, they didn't say, have you come to the point in your spiritual life? Will you, you know, whatever, you know, the words you're supposed to say. But they all planted those seeds and I think the Lord used all those things together. You know, and the monkeys, it's another thing with the monkeys, I still like them to this day. And obviously, again, I don't, I'm not promoting the monkeys as Christian. And I'm not promoting any of the individual monkeys as Christian. I mean, there's some evidence that Davy may have made a profession, but I don't know that. We talked about that previously with the Beatles. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know them personally. I don't know Davy personally. There's certain things he said, but it could have been just an aging Davy talking about God. I don't know. He wasn't specific about the gospel that I know. Maybe somebody else does, but I don't know. Hope so. I think so. Doing the best I can. I'm a Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to a previous podcast to know what that's from. Uh, I'm not a Baptist, by the way. <laughs> so, again, it's it's just encouraging people, Christians, to have your new spirit, your new nature nurtured and fed and willing to let a conversation go where it needs to go. Now, I'm sure I met other Christians that we never got around to the gospel. You know, that could be the Lord's will and the Lord's leading. And they didn't try to force a conversation about it. Uh, I mean, those guys who came by my dorm room, they were very upfront when they came by my dorm room. They didn't try to trick me and get in my dorm room. They told me why they were there. And I said, sure, come on in. And they gave me a gospel message and I argued with them. So it's kind of what I wanted to do. I was 18, full of myself, like most 18-year-olds are. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to argue about it. So that's what we did. But they planted the seed. They probably went away going, that guy's lost forever. And lo and behold, someday... We'll be in our resurrection bodies and I'll go, well, what are you doing here? And same thing, you know, Amy and Brooke and other people along the way, other people that I knew, the guy in my fraternity and other folks that I knew who were Christians. Uh, I went to, with NC State, a group from NC State, we went to protest the Sandinistas re-education camps in Washington. And we went and actually built a re-education camp in front of the Capitol building. It was funny, I, again, just as an aside, we, were t- we took a bus trip up. We actually stopped in Lynchburg at Liberty, Liberty University in Lynchburg. And I met a lot of Christians there and a lot of Christians on this trip. So I had a lot of really interesting conversations on the way there. Again, I didn't make any profession of faith, but it was just more seeds being sown. Just as an aside, as we were coming into town, they said they needed people to play the Sandinistas. Well, I'm Italian. I have olive skin. I have I black hair, olive skin. <laughs> I knew they were going to pick me. So when he was the guy was walking down the bus and he needed people to be Sandinista, so they pointed at me. I got to be a Sandinista. So I got some home movies of me and my my fatigues, whatever they're called, <laughs> of me uh, in front of the Capitol building as a Sandinista. So anyway, I got it's it's uh, somewhere. I don't know if I put that on YouTube or not. Anyway, again, this is a short message today, but I just wanted to lighten things up just a little bit. We talked about grace and faith. You know, our mission here is several levels, but our, our our first mission is to honor the Lord, preach the Lord. Now, we should preach him dispensationally correct. We should preach the message for our hour. Uh, just as an easy example, I'm not going around telling people they need to go to Jerusalem and sacrifice sheep because that would not be the correct message for this hour. So... Preaching Christ, but his finished work primarily, primarily. But then again, when it comes to the Christian life, helping them to understand the mystery. And if you don't know know what I mean by the mystery, go back and look at the previous messages that are, have mystery in the title or what is dispensationalism or more on dispensationalism, that sort of thing. And you'll, you'll have an idea of the age in which we live. I think next time I'm going to talk about uh, the Lord's Supper and baptism just a little bit. These are very informal studies, by the way. There's a little more depth at the, uh, at the blog contextorconfusion.com, www.contextorconfusion.com. I think you have to put that in there or it gives you a weird page. But I did want to also promote acts28.net. There's some great audio studies there as well as written studies and charts. Bibleunderstanding.com. Again, tremendous amount of audio messages and, and written studies. Some introductory basic level to advanced there. Leavenedwater.org. It's a Dutch site, but it has an English side. 
tremendous materials there. And TFT Min, tftmin.org, which was Oscar Baker's ministry, recordings from him and writings uh, there. So those are some sites that I do want to promote for Christians to understand the faith in a deeper way and correct and, and rightly divide the word. But for unbelievers, it's accepting that finished work. It's already done. All your sins have already been, God is not holding anything against you. The work is done and God has already been reconciled to you. Your job is to be reconciled to God. And you do that by putting your faith wholly. That means you all hope, any hope you have for an eternal resurrection life in the death sacrificial death, burial and lack of decay, and rising again from the dead of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have a great day. Go listen to some monkeys. Praise the Lord. Witness for the Lord and just be ready to speak a word on his behalf. And I thank those ladies who did that in my life, and I thank those gentlemen who did that in my life, and I thank the Lord for using those earthen vessels. Have a great day.